Is Rust just another passing fad language? Like a lot of the C crowd would have you believe. I've been in the industry for 30 years now, and every couple of years some language comes along and it threatens C and then it goes away. Rust is just another one of those languages. Well, I don't think so. Yes, it's a hard language, the syntax is kind of ugly, and the borrow checker is constantly slapping you in the face. And there are few developers who actually get through the initial excitement of learning Rust. In addition, I know there are lots of jokes out there about rewriting things in Rust. There's lots of memes, lots of discussion on Reddit and places like that. And the C and the C++ people hating on it as if for some reason they see it as a threat, as if it can't be another tool in the toolbox. But to me, it is not a passing fad or a new modern language that's gonna die off in a few years. First, regardless of all those jokes, all of the things everywhere are being rewritten in Rust, largely for performance reasons. I can't tell you how often I see some new major version release in an app and there being some statement in it about part of the app being rewritten in Rust. Recently, Tailwind announced 4.0, which is an alpha, stating that they have migrated the most expensive and parallelizable parts of the framework to Rust. Microsoft, as we know, is rewriting core Windows services and the M365 core platform in Rust. I'll talk about that in this video. I'll link to it above. Google is pushing Rust to Android. Dropbox is rewriting part of their code base in Rust. And a while back, Discord announced that they were switching from Go to Rust for performance reasons, for performance enhancements. AWS Firecracker was released and was written in Rust and allows you to launch a micro VM in like 125 milliseconds. Another example is there's this awesome replacement to the Python pip tools called UV, which is a tool created by a company called Astral. Their goal is to make UV a cargo for Python, cargo being Rust's build system and package manager, making a cargo basically for Python. It's 10 to 100 times faster in installing Python packages, setting up virtual environments, etc. And it's, guess what? written in Rust. Here's some benchmarks in a Medium article. Cold installation is eight to 10 times faster. Warm installation is 80 to 115 times faster. And then there's a little demo here. Actually creating a VENV, a virtual environment, is about 80 times faster. And here's a demo here installing the transformers package. You see here on the left, they do a pip install transformers and it goes on its way. This is what we normally see, but look over here on the right. Activate the virtual environment, install transformers. Look how quick this is. Boom. Done. Indeed, the speed difference is crystal clear. Will people stop using pip? Who cares? We'll continue writing Python with this new tool. In the Kubernetes space, people are choosing a rusty Linkerd service mesh over a Go powered Istio. Speaking of Go versus Rust, there's a cryptocurrency by the name of Caspa, which is a proof of work chain. They rewrote their code base from Go to Rust, which enabled them to reach 10 blocks per second. They couldn't do that with Go, they achieved it with Rust. 10 blocks Per second. And that of course allows for greater scalability and throughput. Potential transactions go up to 3000 transactions per second. They couldn't reach this with Go, and I'm not saying Go is bad by any means. But when companies need that peak performance and safety, they look to Rust. They're rewriting things in Rust. And when people like Microsoft and Google in Dropbox, in Discord, in blockchains like Caspa and like Solana get heavily involved in Rust, they see some kind of long-term benefit there, else they wouldn't do it. Why go and rewrite all this stuff in Rust if you think it's gonna go away in 10 years? So regardless if it's the right call or not for all these companies, people are rewriting their services or part of their services in Rust, and they're benefiting greatly from the speed and the safety. And that's a big deal here. Yes, you can get these speeds with C, of course. Nobody said you couldn't. But what Rust relieves you of is doing the memory management manually. And yes, I know that's opinionated, but the studies are showing that it's safer. Vulnerabilities created from managing memory manually are common. With Rust, you don't have to manage it manually. Rust has its own way of doing it, but that presents a much safer alternative without giving up performance. Now the trade-off of course is that Rust takes longer to write, but we'll actually see that challenged here in a minute. And there aren't a ton of developers well-versed in Rust because it's a very different language. And sadly for you and I, most of the Rust job openings are only seeking those super experienced devs. I want I want to learn Rust. I want real world projects, but I can't get real world projects until I land that job that requires me to have tons of practice. So here's an interesting article that one of the members of the Imposter Devs community, John, shared. Shout out to John. And by the way, check out the Imposter Devs community. We have weekly events, on-demand recordings and teachings, and is a great way to fill those gaps in your learning in a community setting. I'll put a link to that below. 
Echoing the past two years of Rust's evangelism, Google reports that Rust shines in production to the point that its developers are twice as productive using the language compared to C++. Speaking at the Rust Nation UK conference, Bergstrom said that while Dropbox in 2016 and Figma in 2018 offered early accounts of writing code in memory-safe Rust, and doubts in productivity in the language have subsided, concerns have lingered about its reliability and security. Even six months ago, this was a really tough conversation. I would go and talk to people and they would say, wait, Wait, you have an unsafe keyword. This means we should all write C++ until the end of time. But there's been a shift in awareness across the software development ecosystem about the challenges of using non-memory safe languages. So I'm sure you've heard this. I have a video on it as well. There's been a big government statement about memory safe languages, C not being one of those, and the push to start rewriting those programs in memory safe languages, of which Rust seems to be the safest and the fastest. So we can, we talked about this in the last video, Microsoft Azure CTO argued that software projects that might've been started in C or C++ should use Rust instead. Earlier this year, Microsoft put out a call for developers to help port its own C sharp code to Rust. But what I wanna get at in this article is down here. No loss in productivity, quite the opposite. At the Chocolate Factory, which is the company this guy works at, turning Go code, which is considered memory safe, Go is also memory safe, but not as performant, into Rust has shown noteworthy benefits. When we've rewritten systems from Go into Rust, we found that it takes about the same size team, about the same amount of time to build it. That is, there's no loss in productivity when moving from Go to Rust. That's interesting because Go is much easier than Rust, in my opinion. And the interesting thing is that we do see some benefits from it. We see reduced memory usage in the services that we've moved from Go. And we see a decreased defect rate over time in these services that have been written in Rust. So increasing correctness. More significant is the comparison of rewrites of C++ code into Rust. In every case, we've seen a decrease by more than two times in the amount of effort required to both build the services in Rust as well as maintain and update those services written in Rust. And so that's a really huge thing for us because C++ code is very expensive. These are large teams. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of risk. A bit more than half of his developers say that Rust is easier to review. When we sort of look into why that is, we get sort of the most incredible question of the survey, the one that kind of blew us all away, which is the confidence that people have in the correctness of the Rust code they're looking at. So in comparison to code in other languages, how confident do you feel that your team's Rust code is correct? The answer, Bergstrom said, was 85%. That's a massive number. I cannot get 85% of this room to agree that we like M&Ms. M&Ms, Rust, same thing. So Rust devs aren't any slower than C++ devs. Now I have to say, I have to qualify this whole thing here by saying that Rust isn't the answer to everything. I personally would not choose Rust to build websites. It can, it'll be fast, but there are better tools for the job at the moment. Rust is first a systems programming language and second, all those other things, especially with this nice WASM support. So I'm not saying that Rust is the answer to everything. I'm just saying I don't see it being a fad for those who think it is. What about Zig? I get lots of comments saying, what about Zig? Zig is great and they can both exist. What about Mojo? Well, Mojo is great. It's fast. It's just nobody's using it. So based on all of this adoption, these major services by big players being rewritten in Rust, the safety that it provides at no loss of speed, and the benefits that the companies are seeing from this, I don't see this as a fad. What do you think? Do you think Rust is a passing fad? Do you even like Rust? Is it an ugly language? Do you use it for anything? Let's discuss below down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you even doing? Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.